Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Welcome to the Grok Shop in part five in my series on compost tea. Uh, my apologies for the reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey there. Um, I just couldn't resist. So no, this is definitely not the HAL 9000. Uh, this is a bubble in the assay that I do at the end of this brew. And um, bubbles are kind of interesting to some of these uh, aerobic microorganisms. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means later on in the video. So in this brew, I'll be doing a normal bacterial growth focused tea, which basically just means I'm not focusing on growing fungi out here. You stirring up the water? Stir it up. Never hurts to have a little help. So besides compost, we'll be putting in some blackstrap molasses, some rock dust. I'm using volcanic rock dust here and bat guano or bat poop. Of course, you want to make sure your water's good. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, check out part three in my series. Um, but I'll be adding about four cups of compost here. It's technically vermicompost because I have worms in my compost. <laughs> Therefore, it's vermicompost. So the next thing up, you want to add some food for your bacteria to uh, be able to multiply. And the food of choice I use is uh, blackstrap molasses, mainly because it's cheap. You can get this gallon jug on Amazon for like 12 bucks or something. I'll put a link for you guys below. But um, there was some controversy about blackstrap molasses a while back, but all that's been pretty much put to bed and it's been shown to be quite effective. Next up, I'm gonna add some high nitrogen bat guano. This is really just for fertilization, but I like to put it in and get it to dissolve in the water early on, but you could add it after the brew if you want. Uh, last up, I'll be adding about a quarter cup of rock dust, and this is mainly for soil amendment purposes. Now, if we're making a fungal tea, as we'll be doing in another video, um, rock dust can help provide a place for um, hyphal fungi, uh, mycelium to attach during the brew process and grow out. Okay, 36 hours later, the brew's done. Grab a little sample for the assay and uh, scrape off some residual compost and send it back to the compost heap. So pretty quick here we can see is definitely quite a bit of bacteria, flagellates, and I've got some ciliates running around. Um, so there's definitely quite a bit of biodiversity, much, much more so than the first brew in part four in the series. And this is almost certainly due to the fact we've provided food for the bacteria to grow. Growing bacteria provides food for other organisms. Um, but we can see this is a perimeter of the air bubble that I showed earlier in the video. And um, typically when you see increased activity around these air bubbles, um, it usually means that the um, microbes are largely aerobic instead of anaerobic which means they uh, make their energy from oxygen as opposed to using some chemical reaction uh, to get the energy they need and the organisms we want are aerobic organisms those are the ones that typically are the most beneficial for the soil and plants this is just great watching this is a, you'll see these ciliates tossing themselves up on the bubble and uh, trying to get up on top of that thing as much as they can and sort of bouncing off.
here. Looks like we've got some binary fission or uh, mitosis going on. Some uh, some of those spheroidal flagellates look like they're splitting into. This must be occurring all the time to get the um, vast quantities of flagellates we want to get. Switching over to the dark field view now, you can see a little fungal hyphae here off to the left and a tiny bit off to the right. Looks like attached to some organic material. And it looks like a large ciliate doing some pretty aggressive feeding. Here looks like another flagellate and some bacteria encrusted fungal hyphae. Oh, we got some spiral bacteria here. It looks like it's probably spirillum. Uh, you can't quite make out the flagella. If it's a spirillum, it'll be, it'll have some flagella on the ends. Um, but at this resolution, can't can't quite make that out. Um, but when they're kind of rigid, kind of stiff, moving like that, that's a good sign. It's a spirillum. Yeah, uh, here's a nice long strand of fungal hyphae. Nah, that's what I call a piece of bacteria. Yeah, it's a pretty long uh, sausage link non-motile bacteria there. And here we have one of our nice globe flagellates or spherical flagellates. Uh, it could, could very well be a, a volvox, which is uh, a kind of an algae, very um, common in freshwater and compost.
Okay, I got some nice uh, swimming bacteria here and a few flagellates kicking around. So yeah, if you compare this video to the previous video in the series where um, we just had a compost only brew and didn't provide any food for the bacteria, I think it's pretty obvious that um, this brew just destroys the other brew in terms of um, the quantity and variety of uh, microbial life that we see. So. I'm very happy with it and um, I would say that this particular brew is um, kind of a go-to brew for a vegetative growing um, but there's definitely advantages to the fungal brew which I'll be getting into in the next episode so stay tuned for that and I'll see you then that's how it's done thanks for watching